Welcome, Class of 2020, to your virtual and unique degree conferral ceremony. I, like everyone else, am deeply disappointed that I can't be with you today in person. But we will celebrate today because you have graduated, and it's important to take a few minutes to celebrate and recognize that fact. So today, you're going to hear from various members of our community. Starting us off will be an invocation from Denise Yarbrough, our Director of the Interfaith Chapel. Following that, you'll hear comments from several, de several deans. First, Gloria Culver, our Dean of Arts and Sciences. Then, Wendy Heinzelman, our Dean of Engineering. And then Jeffrey Runner, our Dean of the College. And to wrap things up, you'll hear from your very own Senior Class Council President, Rachel Goodman. To end things today, I'll come back with a very few brief closing remarks, and then we will do as we always do, stand and sing the Genesee. Let us pray. In the name of all that is sacred and holy, we offer our prayers for all of our students in the class of 2020 who have completed their academic programs at the university and are now poised to continue to offer their gifts, creativity, and energy to colleagues, neighbors, friends, and families in the world beyond our campus. We already miss you, having had to send you away altogether too soon when the pandemic hit in March. We grieve with you that we were not able to have the kinds of closing festivities that we all expected to be sharing at this time of year. We send you forth into a greatly changed and challenged world that is anxious and fearful. We are confident that you possess the intelligence, the creativity, the flexibility, and the resilience to meet the challenges that lie ahead for you in this radically changed world. We give thanks with you for the families and friends that have nurtured you through your years in college. We join with you in giving thanks for friendships forged at the University of Rochester that will last your lifetime, for wise mentors, for challenging teachers, and for opportunities for personal, academic, spiritual, and professional growth that have stretched you and tested you as you've graced this campus during this phase of your life's journey. We send you forth buoyed by our great hopes and expectations for all you have yet to do. You are bright, you're energetic and creative, you care about the world, and you're prepared to serve in myriad ways here and all around the globe. O oh, Eternal One, imbue these graduates with humility, a good sense of humor, patience, compassion, and a commitment to justice and peace. May their happiness increase as they serve the world. May they dream big dreams. May they nourish the visionary gleam that lies within them, cultivate the art of seeing invisible things, turn their knowledge into wisdom, hone their sense of right and wrong, and at the last understand the meaning of their own lives. You of our class of 2020, may the eternal spirit bless you and keep you. May the Holy One be gracious to you. May you live expectantly, love courageously, and may you be a blessing to those with whom you will now live and work, as you have been a blessing to this university during your years with us on this campus. Amen. Congratulations to the University of Rochester class of 2020. You made it. This statement in this year feels so different. This is not how you expected your last few months as an undergraduate to unfold. This is not what any of us would have imagined even six months ago. And clearly, this was not on anyone's mind during your convocation in the late summer of 2016. But here we are. And you made it. Somehow, that seems like so much more this year. I do so wish we were all gathered on the quad and that we were all in our regalia. I always look forward to the ceremony and the incredible joy of commencement. The joy of yours should not be lessened, although I completely acknowledge that it will be different. These are different times. All of your accomplishments and struggles, late nights, long exams, hard problem sets and big shows, they are just as significant and impactful as if we were doing this in person. 
In fact, they may even have a, broad, a bigger impact. The amount of work and the level of accomplishment that you have achieved has really been amplified by what all of us have gone through over these last few weeks. And yes, you did this. You made it. And you had a lot of help. All of the people in your support network that helped you get into college and to commencement deserve a huge hug, although some of them might have to happen virtually. I was asked recently what I've learned about the university over the last six or so weeks. And after I thought about it, what came to mind is that we as a community are resilient. You students, our faculty, our staff embody the idea of resilience. This resilience and the ability to think outside the box and continue to grow and achieve while faced with uncertain and unprecedented circumstances will be invaluable to you moving forward. This growth and achievement may in fact be one of the longest enduring parts of your undergraduate experience. You will know how to manage things that seem unthinkable and strange. You will have confronted disappointment and an immediate feeling of disconnection from your normal life. But you did this, and you've got this. This commencement may seem as a, uh, as a poor substitute for what you envisioned, what we all envisioned, the graduates, their families, and all of us at the University of Rochester community. But we will come together in the future, in person, and have a celebration of your commencement. But it will not be the same. It will be different, as every one of us will also be different after this experience. But it will be a celebration, and you will be stronger and more prepared for your life as a University of Rochester alum for the time you spent on our campus and for what you've learned over these last few weeks. Congratulations, Class of 2020. You deserve a very large round of applause. Congratulations to the Class of 2020. While we would all much rather be celebrating this incredible milestone in your lives and careers on our beautiful quad with the sun shining down, this traditional celebration will need to wait for a bit, but that doesn't mean we can't celebrate. This is a time to reflect back on the past four years. And yes, they did not end the way anyone hoped, but think of all you have accomplished. The papers, the problem sets, the exams, the all-nighters, the labs, the studio experiences, the research, the TA ships, the global experiences, the club, the sports, and the competitions. These have all led you to this point, about to step out into the world and embark on your careers. But most of all, today is a day to think of the people, your family who helped you all along the way from near and far, the faculty and staff who have enjoyed teaching, mentoring, and working with you over the past several years, and of course, the lifelong friends you have made with four years worth of memories, fun times, struggles, and celebrations. This is what your University of Rochester experience is all about. You are as prepared as any class has ever been to go out and make your mark on the world. Think of what you have had to overcome to get where you are right now, and take a moment to relish all that you have accomplished wherever you are, and know how proud we all are of you. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Jeff Runner, Dean of the College, to present remarks to our extraordinary graduates. This is not how we expected to be celebrating commencement. Me, here in my living room, you, our graduating students scattered across the globe. But let us not allow the circumstances of this ceremony to diminish your accomplishments. Your time at Rochester has given you an opportunity to explore, to identify passions, and to pursue them with all of your energy. And you have done just that. Your academic pursuits, together with your co-curricular experiences, have expanded your horizons and shaken comfortable assumptions, equipped you with the skills and the confidence for whatever the next phase of your life might bring. Commencement is the formal end of the college years and marks your transition from undergraduate to alum. Rochester alumni share an academic experience often described as analytical, rigorous, and serious. As a student here, you've had the opportunity to work with our world-class faculty throughout the university, 
people who have made enormous contributions in so many disciplines, and you join a group, our alumni, who have made distinctive contributions to many aspects of American life, university presidents, a film critic for the New York Times, an astronaut or two, CEOs of various companies, the Secretary of Energy, Nobel laureates, and more. Congratulations, you are joining a true, true alumni family. You, the class of 2020, with your 2020 vision, and soon your 2020 hindsight, are a unique class. You're the last class who were freshmen and not first years. You learned under three different university presidents in four years. You had two different deans of col the college. You watched the construction of Genesee Hall. Wegmans Hall opened during your first year, as did the upda updated Douglas Commons with its Feldman Ballroom, Burgett Intercultural Center, Language Center, and new dining facilities. You witnessed the birth of the iZone. All of these changes changed you, but you also changed us. Your mark has been left on this university. We are ever better, thanks in part to you. At commencement, we usually announce award winners of various sorts. I'd like to take a minute to do so now. At a virtual awards ceremony, the annual presentation of the Singer Family Prize for Excellence in Secondary School Teaching was presented to four distinguished teachers that were nominated by four of our graduating seniors. I'd like to take a moment to recognize Paul Singer, an alumnus of the class of 1966, who made this award possible. I'd like to recognize the winners for their outstanding contributions to teaching excellence. The recipient, recipients are the, of the Singer Prize this year are the following. Nominated by Tanya Cano, Stephen Cardoso teaches electronics technology at the William M. Davies Jr. Career and Tech High School in Lincoln, Rhode Island. Ryan Hader nominated his chemistry teacher, Sarah English, from Sweet Home Senior High School in Amherst, New York. Alexis Langheyer, a business teacher at South High School in Williamsville, New York, was nominated by Hannah Duttweiler. And Jonathan Bearden nominated Joanne Smith, who teaches Spanish at Johnstown Senior High School in Johnstown, New York. I want to thank the seniors who nominated their secondary school teachers and congratulate those awarded the 2020 Singer Prize. In order to keep this video from getting too long, I will wrap up. I want to remind you that there will be an opportunity to celebrate commencement in person with those who supported you and cheered you on. I look forward to that future joyful occasion and I'm optimistic that we'll, able, we'll be able to do so together on the River Campus one day soon. Until then, go forth and make the world ever better. We need you, our smart, resilient, globally competent graduates today more than ever. Have confidence in your abilities, take pride in your accomplishments, knowing that your faculty and all of us who had any role in nurturing your intellectual development are immensely proud of you. Meliora. Welcome, esteemed faculty, family, friends, and of course, the class of 2020. My name is Rachel Goodman, and it is an honor to be here with you today, even if it is virtually, as we celebrate the end of our college experiences and start of our next adventures. Before I begin, I would like to thank the incredible 2020 class council, Genesis Galindo, Ara Gonzalez, Akanch Hans, Vanilla Pandara Boyina, Jacob Brzezowski, Brendan Stone, and our advisor, Brian McGee, for all of their hard work this year. As many students can attest, members of our halls, teams, and organizations often go from being strangers to friends to family. Class Council is no different, and I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to work with these exceptional individuals and serve as your class president. I would also like to take a moment to thank our loved ones and families. Whether you were near or far, we could not have gotten through college without your support. It's funny, being the compulsive planner I am, I started writing this speech in January before the COVID-19 pandemic turned our world upside down. 
Believe it or not, I wrote about how our college expectations and experiences probably didn't go as we planned, but how we still made the best of them. We don't all have 2020 vision. So thanks COVID for at least being relevant to my graduation speech. Our senior spring definitely did not go the way we anticipated, but despite these unforeseen circumstances, we still found ways to come together and support one another. I am in awe of, but not surprised by, the kindness, unity, and resilience I witnessed across our class. We offered up cars to help students move out of their dorms. We contributed to the student food pantry and basic needs hub. We stayed connected thanks to Zoom classes, Zoom meetings, Zoom concerts, Zoom happy hours, and Zoom birthday parties. A lot of Zoom. And we shared memes, TikToks, and Instagram bingos to escape from our boredom. I know this is not how we pictured our commencement looking. I did not expect to be giving this speech from my dining room table. So let's all take a deep breath, agree that the situation is less than ideal, and reframe our focus. The last two months do not define, nor do they take away from everything we have accomplished before them. We have a lot of reasons to celebrate. Class of 2020, we're graduating. In the fall of 2016, we stood together at the candlelight ceremony on the Eastman Quad, feeling anxious and excited to begin this new chapter of our lives. We started to imagine what the next few years would look like, who our friends would be, what clubs we would join, where we might study abroad, the opportunities seemed endless. Our first year was one of change, learning, and growth. After orientation, we were faced with the reality that college was actually about school. We found our favorite study spots, learned the feeling of accomplishment when our web work turned green, made our first frantic phone call from that bench outside of PRR, and maybe even pulled our first all-nighter. Some followed their interests that brought them to the U of R, while others realized that maybe pre-med wasn't for them and discovered new subjects and passions. We got lost in the tunnels, saw our first pink sunset over the Genesee, and learned that snow days do not exist at the U of R. And we took risks like trying out for a team, joining a new club, or going to the dining hall alone. But over time, the U of R became a place where we could not only grow, but we could thrive. We all did this in our own ways. Some of us became researchers and authors and presented at conferences. Others represented the Yellow Jackets in athletics and brought home national titles. Artists sang, danced, and performed in ways that highlighted their creativity. Many took on responsibilities as RAs, TAs, and student employees and supported campus life. And while some explored new cultures abroad, others found a passion for community engagement and gave back to the city of Rochester. As we grew, the campus community grew with us. We watched the construction of Genesee Hall and struggled to accept that the Sioux quad rivalry was now the first year Hill quad rivalry. Quad Fox made his first appearance, and while we were confused exactly where he came from, we didn't question it and enjoyed his quirky presence. This past fall, we welcomed President Mangelsdorf to the U of our family and were excited about new beginnings. Our class also initiated change to continue this campus growth. We were never afraid to speak up and address problems that faced our community. We protested when we saw injustice, stood as allies to show solidarity, and engaged in dialogue to discuss solutions. We sought to create a community where everyone felt supported and accepted, and I truly think we are leaving this campus better than we found it. It would be impossible for me to reflect everyone's time at the U of R in one speech. We each have a unique story to tell. However, I think we can all agree that nobody's college experience went exactly as expected. But without these experiences, we would not have become the resilient individuals we are today. And while our anticipated paths may have changed, the end goal did not. We are all graduating from the University of Rochester. So congratulations, class of 2020. I am so grateful that I had the opportunity to share this incredible journey with you and wish you the best of luck in whatever your next adventure may be. Continue to stay safe, healthy, and connected. I look forward to a time in the future when we can all return to campus, walk under the clock tower, and celebrate this accomplishment together at our beloved college home beside the Genesee. Thank you and Meliora. Well, that brings us to the end of today's degree conferral ceremony. I'd like to thank Denise Yarborough, Director of the Interfaith Chapel for her invocation. And I'd also like to thank Deans Culver, Heinzelman, and Runner for their remarks. And finally, 
I very much appreciate hearing the thoughts and words from your senior class council president, Rachel Goodman. We'll end today as we always do. And so wherever you are, across the country, across the world, or right down the street, let's stand now and sing our alma mater, the Genesee. Thank you. Oh, many fair and famous streams beneath the sun there be, yet more to us than any sea.